Need some fast, cheap, reliable muck coins? Go to MMOXP.com and use discount code MONEYSHOT for 5% off your order. Link in the description below. Welcome back, YouTubers and Madden fans. This is Mad Money Shot, sniffing out the Madden cheese as always. Got another tip video for you today. In today's video, I'm going to be going over a topic that I probably should have did a long time ago. Uh, something that people have been struggling with all year, and that's beating the Blitz. Now, you have certain functions that EA allows you. Um, they give you some things to try to beat the Blitz. But to me, I have a much better method. Seven things that you can do to beat the Blitz, aside from the blocking controls, that are probably more effective. So I'm going to go over that in today's video. Uh, if you want to see more videos like this let me know in the comment section hit the like button other than that before i get into the video today i'm going to be releasing this video on draft day so if you're excited for draft day and you have a favorite team or a favorite player that you want for your team to get let me know in the comment section i would love to talk drafts with you guys the first tip that i would give you for somebody that's trying to you know beat the blitz if you have an opponent that's sending a lot of crazy blitzes a lot of heat your way uh, you definitely want to be in the shotgun so most of this video is going to be in the shotgun because to me number one you're starting back what like five seven yards deep i'd have to see once we start to play but you're starting back uh, at a deeper position than you would if you start to play out in like a single back formation you can see even a pistol formation is a little bit further behind the center than the actual single back if you're starting off if you're trying to pass at a single back you're trying to pass out of i form and you're under center you're basically making the defense's job easier because the cornerbacks the blitzing players they're all that much closer to you and not only that but the animation when you drop back is a lot longer you're taking you know multiple step drops it's a much slower animation where the shotgun's basically like catching the ball and being able to throw it number two is something that i can't show in practice mode and that's going to be a hurry up offense uh whenever somebody's running a intricate blitz uh at least if it's a successful blitz it's usually like three four five steps and if you're running a hurry up offense you can eliminate just one step you're gonna you can keep them from putting that last step in that makes that blitz actually work and that's all it really takes so i know from experience when i'm setting up my blitzes if somebody's running a hurry up it just really if it's, especially if it's something like you want to get a cornerback into a QB contain lane or you want to motion you know a linebacker or, or you want to you know move somebody in a position where it makes the play successful you might be able you might not be able to get that in based off the fact that your opponent's running a hurry up which is a huge advantage on offense so if somebody's sending a lot of blitzes where they're motioning cornerbacks motioning linebackers whatever doing a lot of adjustments if you can notice that just run a hurry up offense and they won't be able to get that successful blitz off anymore number three motion block a receiver if you motion a receiver behind the line of scrimmage and they are inside the tackle box if you hike the ball before they leave the tackle box they'll turn to a blocker and that can pick up a lot of edge rushers it can pick up a lot of inside rushers it's not as uh you know it's not as precise as some other tips i'm going to give you like right there he kind of just stood around did nothing if you watch the replay but a lot of times if you have a uh you know a guy coming off the edge like this wasn't an actual blitz he'll pick up the edge blitz quite a lot i mean it's a, it's a pretty successful look a lot of people do it a lot of pros do it um, you can motion the tight end the same way but that's probably uh, a little less effective because they're not as quick or they're not as mobile but motioning a receiver across, if you have somebody running like a 146 or you have somebody running something where cornerbacks are blitzing, they're going to do a much better job of picking those guys off and blocking for you uh, than, you know, slower players like tight ends. Number four is blocking your running back. Now, that may sound simple, but your running back is one of the best weapons you have on the field as far as pass protection goes. Simply blocking him is not enough. If I put him on a pass block, that doesn't necessarily take for a couple of, account for a couple of different things. Uh, number one, you want to make sure your running back is on the right side of the field when it comes to the blocking scheme. So if you have a cornerback on the right side, that you know that you can see that your opponent is putting him into a QB contain lane or just bring him down to the line because he wants a shorter path to the quarterback. If he's blocking, if your running back is blocking but he's starting off on the wrong side, he's not going to be as effective. I'll go ahead and I'll start the play to show you what I'm talking about. As you can see right here, the running back didn't even see him. Whenever your opponent is, is motioning guys to the line to try to get a easier blitz or a faster blitz, all you have to do put the uh, running back on QB or on a, uh, on a pass protection and make sure he starts off on the same side as the blitzer and he'll do a much better job of picking that up. So tip number five is quick throws. Now, as far as uh, quick throws go, it really depends on what defensive coverage you're looking at. Like things that will beat 
uh, cover three or, or things that will beat man coverage they're not going to be the same so you have to know what coverage beaters are as far as what i'm running against right now i'm running against a man coverage and a lot of times when i see an opponent running a lot of man blitzes on me which is probably the most popular style of blitz i'll just put these guys on the uh in the slots into uh to zig routes zig routes are very good man beaters as i'm going to show you right here uh, but there are things like you know slants which a lot of people use uh in in routes out routes anything that breaks is really going to be a good coverage beater when it comes to a man coverage. Comeback routes are going to be good against uh, you know against man coverages. So something that looks like this, I have multiple options now based off of the adjustments that I made. Uh, but things you know, if it's like a cover three, a flat route's going to work, but against man coverage, it's going to get picked off. So you have to know what beats certain coverages. But if you have a good understanding of that, then you just really have to make adjustments for quick throws. So, like I said, right here, the reason that I put my my slot receivers, both slot receivers in the zigs, is because I don't want the user to key in on one. If I just have one on the zig, then the user can key in on it, then what am I going to do? So, like I said, put two receivers that you can throw to, so that if they decide to use or one, you can throw to the other, and that's going to be your best way uh, to get that open. So, like I said right here, zig routes, instant open. If you dink and dunk and pick your opponent apart like that and go down the field just basically hitting five 10 yard routes that you can catch and run eventually they're going to get out of that defense because they're going to realize that you have it figured out and they can't beat it another good option is just streaking your fastest receiver and taking a shot so if your opponent is coming out in a lot of blitzes uh, a lot of man blitzes or if they're doing something even more like pressing which a lot of people will do out of a man blitz or really you know cover three cover two any time you press streaking is going to be a vulnerable look so if you see that just find your fastest receiver receiver on this particular you know team is Deshaun Jackson I'm gonna go ahead I'm just gonna you know drop back and bomb it up just lob it so if that happens I mean I have a pretty good chance of coming down with it I have a pretty good chance of making a big play or at least threatening to the point where my opponent might have to rethink their strategy uh, which sometimes is enough and then last but not least we have the blocking controls now I'm leaving this for last because ultimately, in my opinion, the things that I mentioned ahead of this are way more effective. But there are some good things that you can do when it comes to block controls. So the LB button, the left bumper, or L1 on the PlayStation is what brings up your menu. Uh, you have a couple of different things. ID the mic is something that they added last year. If you think there's a particular play, player blitzing, you can uh, change your blocking assignments by IDing them. That's hitting A and then hitting A again once you select the player. Uh, other than that, you also have... Um, some really good things like slide left and slide right. So once again, if the court, if, if you're, you know, guys down the box, once again, you know, he's blitzing, just, you know, hit the right stick to the right or to the left based off of what side you think the blitz is coming from. That's a pretty decent look. Uh, Max protect will basically any tight ends or any running backs, fullbacks, um, will typically turn to blockers. I mean, on a play like this, where the uh, the tight end is in the slot, anybody inside of the, the box will basically turn to a blocker. So if the tight end is at the line, he'll turn to a blocker. That includes you've got two, three tight ends. It doesn't really matter. So I don't think personally that uh, you know max protection is something I don't use that very often. I don't think you're going to run a great offense if you have you know two receivers running around. That's going to be pretty easy for the user to tell. So to me, max protect is not something that I necessarily use, but it's a pretty decent function. And then double team, I think that's a really good look uh, when you're trying to open up holes in the run game. But if you have a superstar uh, defensive end or a superstar uh, defensive tackle or whatever, somebody that's a really good pass rusher, double teaming them by hitting down the right stick and then once again selecting them by hitting A like a DeMarcus Ware uh, will make the play, uh, will make them do a little bit of a better job blocking. Now, in a play like this, it's an all-out man blitz still. But if you have a regular play, like a regular cover three, they're just rushing three or four, uh, doing the double team uh, is going to be a good function to slow down some of the superstar players that have really overpowered uh, block shedding ability and things like that. So that's it. That's the video. If you guys want to see more videos like this, let me know in the comment section or hit the like button and I'll do that next. Other than that, thanks for watching, man. Boy, shit out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.